So today I'm talking to Gareth and uh, Gareth, I'm so grateful that you've taken time out of your day to, to have a chat with me. Um, so if you can introduce yourself and your organization to, to students who don't already know you. Mm, that sure. Would be great. <laughs> Hi, Yvonne. Yeah, thanks for, for having me. I think um, just nice to be, be chatting to you and um, yeah, hopefully it's a, it's a discussion that's useful for, for everyone. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to, to the chat. So um, yeah, maybe just brief background on me. I never wanted to be a CA. I definitely didn't want to be an accountant. Um, I was at school, I was into my drama. Oh, I was okay. Poetry. I was into <laughs> I was in, I was, very, I was into sport as well. So before you write me off as a cultural nerd, I was, I was very into tennis and cricket. Um, but one thing I wasn't into was numbers and maths. And oh, wow. Kind of, so okay. So my, parents, my parents thought it was a good idea. Of um, course they did. You know, because I think parents generally do, but, but I didn't. Um, so, I mean, I started at UCT um, after school doing, my parents convinced me to do a business qualification. So I, I started okay. doing business science marketing. Um, and then, yeah, so I started doing marketing, but then I also, I guess, realized that marketing, a little bit on the airy fairy side, not the most um, solid, hard and fast um, skill set okay. um, that you could use. And I suppose what, I, what, what grew on me in terms of, a, of, of accounting um, is, is more how it opened up a systematic pattern of thought for critical thinking um, and that that was a useful platform more than just in accounting and business, but in life yeah. to make good decisions and to plan well um, and to think about the world. And, it, and, and that was really what got me to make the switch from marketing to, to um, financial accounting on the, the CA stream at UCT. Um, and, and I always viewed it, I think, as that, as not, not accounting, um, okay. but, but a, a, a foundation for good thinking. Yeah. Um, and I think I've carried that forward into what I've done uh, when we started CA Connect in 2010. Um, and basically, in, as I said, it's broader than just, just work. It goes into yeah. life and decision making and everything. So um, that's kind of the very brief overview. I could talk about it a lot. <laughs> uh, right. but, but that's kind of where it all started and the thinking behind how I eventually ended up as a, right. as a CA. And, and maybe not not a traditional CA in the sense that I don't like numbers um, and I okay. don't like, I don't like the detail. Um, I, I like the system. Yeah. And I like the thinking processes okay. um, and I like the Fair community enough. and the people. Yeah. Um, but, but in terms of the numbers, um, I would be, I, it would be a happy day in my life when I didn't deal with numbers. Okay. That's definitely <laughs> not an introduction you expect from, from someone doing what you do and with your background, but that's, that's really fascinating. That's really, really fascinating. So, so you're, you're not planning on pursuing some acting career on the side? Oh, I would love to. Hey? I'd love to. I miss it. Like uh, from school days, drama, music, um, sport. Oh man, I, I would love to do, do that side of things, which I suppose is, I mean, it's not something that's out of the question. I mean, no, no, no. Thing about, about lecturing and that kind of thing is there yeah. is an element of flexibility. So, so you can pursue other things. So, yeah, so we'll see you on TV one day. Yeah, look out for me in the theater. I might be, I might be <laughs> playing Pinocchio in the next theater production. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. I want free tickets. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. Yeah. So, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. I, I, I had no idea that that was in your background. So that's really, really interesting because it's not actually that often that I come across someone who, you know, had that much of a opposite background, you know, to like definitively not in there. So that's, that's really cool. That's, that's really interesting. As long as you're happy with what you're doing, as long as you don't feel like you were jippoed out of your career and your future, no, as as well, happy. No, that, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I, I think that's the hardest question of all. And, yeah. and it's, it's a question that um, for students, we should be talking about a lot. I mean, one of the first things that we do um, with all our students who join is a program called self authoring. Um, anyone can do it at, at, at selfauthoring.com. And it's, it's really about writing about your life and what your, your goals and objectives are. Okay. Um, and there's, there's fascinating research that shows that people and students who do this um, course, which it's a short online course that, as I say, anyone can do, have a, I think it's a 30 to 40% higher likelihood of being successful in what they're doing and, and passing and not dropping out and, and yeah. those types of things. And, and as I say, those are the hard questions in life in terms of what what should I be doing? What am I good at? How yeah. am I best positioned to add value to the world? Yeah. Those, are the, those are the most important questions that, that we need to think about. So often we just think, 
oh, I don't know, I'm an accountant or I'm an engineer or I'm a doctor and I do my thing. You're going to make a lot of money or like get this title. Yeah. yeah. And we need to think bigger than that because um, we, yeah, I mean, we need to think about about the world and what the world needs and how our skill set can be useful Mm. in enabling that and making the world better. I sound very philosophical here, but (laughs) not talking nearly enough about accounting. (laughs) Some people might say it's a good thing. Yeah, but I mean, my concern, I guess, with with the world and and especially like kind of, I suppose, the subset of people we deal with, Yvonne, is, yeah. is the students. They're not asking those questions enough, um, and and it's it's they're hard questions because it's not something yeah. I can yeah. tell them. It's not something you can tell them. It's a question mm-hmm. that we that, that needs to be asked, and they need to do a lot of thinking and soul searching and talking to people and and, and exploring, and and yeah. only they can ultimately answer it. Yeah. And the problem is if they don't answer it. And they don't come up with something that's satisfactory in terms of their interrelationship with the world. Then, well, of course you're not going to be, be happy. I don't know, happy you, your well-being yeah. is going to be affected. All all those yeah. things that come with it, and, and yeah. that has to be the starting point in these discussions. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with you, and and I, I think um, you yeah, did something last week, just saying there's so so many people say to me, but I don't know what I want to do with my life. You know, this big like I don't want to. She's, I haven't figured out what I want, you know, like my happily ever after career. And I think especially in, in today's society, there's no such thing. We kind of, we shift from phase to phase and seasons in our life where you're doing this and then you're doing that and you're using that skill for that, but you never, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure there's stuff, you know, there's stuff that you've done and are doing that you never expected, you know, was never in the plan. Um, but that's what makes life amazing. And the more you expose yourself to different things, different people, different conversations, different, you know, different environments, um, you start realizing just how many and just how broad the opportunities are out there. And, you know, one of the other things I find like a little sad, you know, you were saying you kind of picked up that there's an underlying skill to this whole finance and accounting thing, you know, the thought processes and the way you think in that. And I, th- I find, unfortunately, a lot of people focus only on the numbers. You know, I'm good with the numbers. I can do these calculations. I'm good with the numbers. But that does kind of limit your options for your career, mm-hmm. for your life, and for what you're doing. But if you see this stuff as skills, if you work on these things as skills, like the world really is, you know, the opportunities mm-hmm. out there are, are pretty impressive. 100%, yeah. Pretty impressive. And, and, and in, in terms of almost me talking about my dislike of numbers, I... <laughs> That it's probably not fair to numbers. Numbers are probably being very offended by me right now. But but the, the numbers are great, as you say, as long as you can understand the thinking behind the numbers. Then yeah. then I'll have numbers any day. Yeah, but, yeah. To, but to crunch numbers for the sake of crunching numbers, that's not particularly useful. But when it's for a specific objective in terms of a specific plan, then yeah. absolutely. And, and 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 the value of that is once you can do that, then it, as you say, it becomes a much bigger skill set than just accounting. It becomes a life skill. It yeah. becomes a learning skill. It becomes yeah. a powerful tool for decision making. Absolutely, um, and that's how yeah. we empower ourselves as individuals and yeah. and communities. And and um, yeah, as I say, add value to the world. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so much broader than I'm going to find myself sitting behind the accountant's desk as the financial director, or you know, I'm going to be the accountant or the FD or the FM or whatever the case is. Like that's one thing I wish you know you kind of only really get later on in your life, you find the exposure of people who have studied and have accounting as a background, but they're doing some completely ridiculous things mm-hmm. with that skill underlying, you know, with that as an underlying skill, which is fascinating. So there's, there's, no, there's no end, you know, like don't approach your career with, with blinkers. Yeah. So yeah. to move a little away from you to, to CA Connect. So CA Connect has been around for a bit of a while. And at the moment, you're offering online CTA, psycho accredited, which means that students can come through you and write CTA, and they will be eligible to write psychos board exams, ITC and, and APC. So they can register for that. They can do everything through you. You have all the material, all the exams, uh, all the classes, etc. And it's completely online. Do you want to talk us through some of your program or stuff about yeah, sure. your program? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, as you say, CA Connect started back in, it actually started in 2009, um, where I, I managed to get signed off my articles early. Um, and, and we started working on it from then, I think. Um, 
the the thing that we tried to address with CA Connect when we when we started back in the day was that students just were struggling and they needed extra support. Um, and it was especially yeah. unique students um, at the time. And and I mean, me and the the three guys who started it, we weren't um, we weren't hot shots at business. We weren't hot shots at anything. We were straight out of articles. We just saw a need that while wow, students were struggling, and so we just threw ourselves into quite naively, to be honest, we threw ourselves into this. This, this thing of well, students need help. How can we help? And that was the attitude we went in with: yeah. was literally, how can we help? What's what's going on here? How can we do this thing better? Um, and as I said, it was naive because um, literally ten years later was the, was the first time we we um, almost launched the, the the only fully online psycho accredited CTA, um, which was which was literally what we started out trying to do at the end of wow. two thousand and nine because we were saying, well, there's an access problem. Students can't yeah. get access to quality education. Yeah. Um, and, and we just need to do better and we need to improve the mechanism that we've got. And when we um, developed the online CTA, I think what we, we looked at two core pillars that we needed to create a program that was just like contact education. So if you went to a UCT, a VITS, a UJ, the experience must be that, if not better, and in a lot of ways I think it's better, but it must be at least that experience of going to a contact education in terms of the support and guidance yeah. Um, and, and relationship that you have and community that you have with everyone around, but it must be coupled um, that experience with the accessibility of being able to do it anywhere in the world. Right. Um, and if we can kind of get those, those two fundamental pillars together, that's almost the, the launch pad for, for great education. Um, so, so that's what we launched um, last year. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an exciting program. I think we, we, took basically a year and a half off to develop the program. So we have basically 10 CAs um, who lecturers, and we took a year and a half um, wow. just de developing this course from the ground up of saying, what is great education? Yeah. Um, how, how do we do things differently to, um, to, to traditional education? What is systematically wrong? Um, and mm -hmm. we could address it from, from the ground up. I mean, as an example, um, who wants to sit through a four hour lecture? Um, so we said, well, or who can even concentrate? <laughs> so, so a fundamental um, criteria for us was well learning moments have to be five to ten minutes yeah so if you look at all the, the videos and the guidance we have sure. everything kind of packages of five to ten minutes and and that 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 is a and even that to be honest if you look at the research is a little bit long but those are the kinds of pockets mm -hmm. of of education that that you can concentrate through and then um, you pivot those almost those act, th those moments um, into active learning where you say straight away from looking at concepts you dive into um, almost examples and application um, and then back into videos and then back into some examples and then mm -hmm. back into a different type of example so it's this very very active learning process um, that 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 I, I think captures almost the the best of both worlds um, right. in terms of in terms of what we yeah. provide so can a student a student can study from from anywhere in the world, where, where do they write exams? So yeah, absolutely. That we've got 42 test centers across South Africa. Oh, okay. So they, so yeah, all the learning is online, but the actual tests okay. are, are written at venues. We, I've got a project going where I'm actually looking to see if we can get to writing online. Um, that would be ideal. The problem at the moment is Saika. Um, the, yeah. the first board exam is written by hand, so students need to get good at writing by hand. So yeah. unfortunately, until until Saika can move on yeah. it, which which isn't going to be long. No, um, it won't. Yeah. But, but for now, they, they, we've got the 42 venues around the country. Um, we also make sure if students have to uh, travel more than 50 Ks, um, then we can arrange a specific venue for the students. Um, so a lot of students end up writing almost at their audit firms um, and that oh, type okay. of thing. There's various criteria for obviously making sure the, of the integrity um, of the exams and that kind of thing with invigilators. But we, we, we create a system where they can be, be anywhere in South Africa, anywhere in the world. Um, and that's how um, students also come from. Yeah. We've got a lot of students in Namibia, Zimbabwe, um, students in Europe, students in, in, in yeah. the States. Um, and yeah. they, they write at venues basically within 50 kilometers of, yeah. of where they are. Okay. It's, also really, it's really useful for students like sports people as well, because also some people travel. Oh, right. Some people also write tests at different venues throughout the world yeah. um, during a program. So it's just nice to have that kind of accessibility. Flexibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the other thing that I, I really like is uh, that you can start in the middle of the year, that there's two intakes a year, uh, mm -hmm. February and July, is that right? July. 
So that's obviously to meet the guy who's going to write June ITC the following year. Okay. Yes. So that's really good because there's always a, <laughs> there's always that situation where you're waiting for a supplementary or you've got one module left that you have to finish your degree or whatever the mm -hmm. case is. So you start clean, fresh. You've got two intakes a year, completely clean, fresh, yeah. start in July, from July to May. Well, right? From July yeah. to April. April, that's so right. July to April and then you'd write the, 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 the June exam. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, it's really useful because, as you say, That's different helpful. people end at different times and supplementary exams, and that, that makes it quite complicated. So also, yeah. again, when we designed this thing from scratch, we said we have to have two What's intakes. Yeah. I've yeah, got yeah. two board exams, so why don't we have two intakes? I'm so, uh, so glad because those board exams, I'm so glad that Psyker put the two board exams in, you know, because that mm. whole year between yeah. no, it was a waste of time, repeat yeah. ITC is just absolutely crazy. So I was really glad, I was really glad to see, to see that. And you also uh, offer I think maybe one that I should mention that that's quite useful in the two intakes is, is we don't only run the, the CTA, we also run a bridging program. Yes, I was just going to say, if you want to tell me about yeah. your bridging program, who's that designed for? Yeah, we also have two intakes for that. Um, what we found in the past was that there's a lot of students who want to do CTA who don't immediately write, uh, meet the entrance criteria yeah. for CTA. Um, so the bridging program is really there to address that need. I mean, we, probably the most um, common type of students that we have doing that are students who've been in practice and haven't studied, say, yeah, for okay. five, ten years, right. and they almost just need a refresher. So, I mean, our bridging course is six months. It's, it's certainly not a conversion course. Um, you see conversion courses sometimes, for example, that'll take an engineer and help them convert to accounting. Yeah, yeah. Um, ours is four people with an accounting background okay. who in a lot of ways need just that, that, that marginal step up. They haven't been studying for a while. Um, they maybe did a non-CA stream yeah. um, at the university just to give them that, that, that step up into CTA. Um, and, and then they can go directly into the CTA from, from that six months. And that, that bridging course isn't, it's, a lot of bridging courses around the country are just uh, almost a third year of yeah, a qualification. Yeah. Yeah, our, yeah. our bridging course has quite a different mindset in terms of saying, our lecturers have been running CTA for 10 years. We've identified very key aspects and, mm. and matters where students struggle. And the only question our, our bridging course asks is how can we lay a firm foundation and a right. solid foundation so that when students attend CTA, they are in a strong position to do They're that. But that. we don't look at an exhaustive syllabus in terms of covering every Everything. last, yeah. um, every last um, thing. But what we do do is we say, how do we provide a solid foundation? Um, and, yeah. and we've got an, it's, it's still an intense six months, but it's an intense six months of, of, of concepts and, yeah. and thinking about thinking and not getting into the detail and, and, and just talking about how we develop good thought processes and critical thinking, because the students we see who struggle in CTA are, not, are, are generally, they don't struggle with the, almost the technical detail no. stuff. No. They struggle with the basics yeah. and struggling with the basics translates into struggling with the detail. And, and so that's why our bridging course says, um, how, can we, how can we impact and firm up that foundation? Yeah. Um, and, and because that's six months, um, what's nice also with our six months with our CTA, CTA intake is for example, students starting our February bridging course can then start the CTA yeah, in July. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so there's a whole cycle. Not a gap. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's, yeah. why, that's kind of the ethos or the, the design um, is to think of how we can, um, how we can kind of bring these two, together as like an, a, yeah. an overall system. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I think, obviously the largest portion of the population of accounting students are going to come from UNISA undergrad. So one of the questions I get about CA Connect quite a bit is I did my undergrad at UNISA. Will I pass at CA Connect? And the answer is obviously yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of it depends in there. But <laughs> I mean, Let's hear I mean, your answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is a hard question, Yvonne. I mean, because it it's because there's there's a lot of layers to it that need yep. to be unpacked. I mean, the first layer is that I suppose changing institutions is always inherently difficult. Yeah. Where the, any institution you go from, I mean, if wherever you go, I mean, I often use the example of UCT, but simply because I was at UCT, um, but if you take a look at the, the UCT um, pipeline or design, um, the BCom or the business science going into their PGDA, which is their CTA, 
is designed as a single pipeline. Yes. Um, yeah. And so the designers of the program scaffold it in a way that it's it's a seamless progression from one year to to the next. Um, so if you can think, any time you're joining a chain, at almost not the bottom, that there, there is going to be friction in that. Um, so so that's always a consideration um, to 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 come into it. That said, a lot of our students do come from from UNISA, and I think what they appreciate our, about our program, um, and it's another thing we, we spoke about a lot as a as a team when we designed it, was that we lead with genuine care and we lead with guidance um, and we lead with designing our program about forming a functional community um, where we know each other, we talk to each other, we're accessible to each other. Um, we don't present ourselves as authorities that this is what you're going to do and you listen or else. Um, we think of it as a, a partnership um, right. in terms of we're walking a journey together. We have the same goals. We all want to get through. No one's got a hidden agenda to make anyone fail. We want to know you. We want to know how you work, what you struggle with. Um, and that's the basis for learning. I think yeah. anytime you're looking at the basis for learning as here's a book and good luck and I don't know, ask me a question if you might have a question. That's not a good way to think about learning. We need to think about how we're thinking about this thing. And, and, and as we say, when we, when we look at the economy and the skills that are needed in, in, in today's world, we need people who can communicate. We need people yeah. who can negotiate. Yeah. Um, we, we need people who can articulate needs and then use those as a basis for solving problems. Um, and, and those are the skills that we need to develop. And I think technology has got to such a point where we can do this. I mean, the fact that um, we having this discussion, yeah. you halfway across the world and, yeah. and we, we're not physically close to each other, I mean, means that these are things that we can facilitate online. Absolutely. And just yeah. because someone is in Zimbabwe or Namibia or- It doesn't change it. Yeah, it doesn't change it. They are, we, we can have these relationships, we can have these communities. And so we, we, we yes, I think our, our, our teaching and learning is excellent and top class, but I think the things that our students value in what we do is that we connect with them, we want to get to know them, we're always available. Um, we, we never have the case where, I don't know, a student is struggling and they can't reach out or they don't know how to reach out. Um, we yeah. never have a situation where kind of, I don't know, you write an email and kind of three days later, someone sort of pretends to reply to it. Um, we, 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 th that is the most important thing, yeah. thing to us that we can, can yeah. connect. Um, but to go back to your question, I mean, will, will the other layer to the will I pass question um, is the, the, the other aspect is, is, as I said, we think about this thing, I, I suppose, as a partnership. Um, and in any partnership, a partnership works because the partners do their work, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a friendship, um, whether it's a, an academic relationship, like, like in a course like this. Um, and therefore there's the symbiotic relationship where the best course in the world can't make you pass. Um, so I'd certainly like to think that a student who is engaged um, yeah. and, and talks to us and, and works through the material appropriately and interacts and engages in the discussion forums and the groups that we have, that they would have a, a great chance of, of, of passing. Um, but I think any educator who's going to say, yes, you will pass, um, is, is, I guess, not understanding what education is because it yeah. is this partnership. Yeah. Um, and that's, what's, that, that, that's what we need to think about. Yeah. Now. So I, I think uh, I, I totally agree with you because, as I said at you know, the beginning of the question, for me, when I answer it, there's a lot of it depends. In there. <laughs> you know, it depends. You're going to need, as you said, you're going to need to make some changes because lecturers examining styles, et cetera, although everyone's working to the same ITC in this case, um, it does, that does impact you. But, um, you know, the, the, the student themselves, regardless of where you go, just like anything else in life, you take yourself with you. So if you're the student who doesn't really put in the effort, crams the day before the exam, you're going to take that with you. Going to a different institution is not going to change that. Um, I think, you know, from, from discussing, you know, from, from, from the chats that I've had with you, uh, what, I, what I'm happy to hear and what, what I would encourage and what I hear a lot from students is, you know, I'm struggling with this uh, or I'm worried about that, but they won't, they won't approach you. They won't approach their lecturers in general. Uh, you know, 
students, you know, we don't really want people to know just how stupid we are <laughs> and just what we don't know and just what we're not comfortable with. And I find most students have the idea that their lecturers expect that they know stuff. So I can't go to my lecture and say, you know, that lecture we had yesterday, no idea what's going on. Like, uh, where do I begin? Because we had the lecture and so I'm supposed to know. So I think, you know, the, one of the things that I, you know, continually tell students is if you're going somewhere that has support, make use of it, mm -hmm. you know, go and ask the question because. And, and what, what know. I would say is to, to kind of jump in there is I think something I, I feel great sympathy for students who don't feel empowered to be able to reach out into support systems and something we're looking at in our program strongly um, is this idea of proactive support and okay. most okay. institutions will provide reactive support right. which means yeah. my door is always open yeah, come, come and consult me. with me please yeah. please come in but i always i love the idea i don't know if you remember a few years back there was a, a an advert for a car tracking company where there was a couple eating dinner um and oh, then yeah. they got a call and they said we've recovered your car we and the couple even know was like, well, I didn't know my car was gone. Yeah. And the, the, the idea that this tracking company had recovered their car before they even yeah. knew it was missing. And now the struggle I think that students often have is they get off track before they know they're getting off track. Yeah. And yeah. something amazing that we have with online education is we can track student behavior um, in terms of right. when you log on, yeah. how long do you stay on for, what lessons do you watch? What videos do you yeah. watch? Where do you yeah. pause? Where do you rewind? How long do you study? How short do you study? Do you do the exercises? What are your results? We have significant information about you. And yeah. therefore, as educators, we believe in our online program that we have the responsibility that if we can see your patterns of behavior are not systematically well, building yeah. to you having yeah. a chance of success, then I'm just waiting for you to reach out. I must reach out to you. Yeah. And that's good support because... Yeah that if you're in a, again the symbiotic relationship where we're helping each other yes of course you must reach out if you've got a problem and yes we must design yeah. support structures that that um, accommodate you in terms of your support but i i'm also definitely going to phone you up and say hey yvonne it's not what the hell? Yeah. you haven't been online for yeah. for two weeks like how can yeah. that be good um, or i think I see that's such a great that's such a great thing and it's something you know i, I do with my students as well as because you know when students are comfortable, they're engaged. When they're feeling like they're making progress, when they're feeling good, they're engaged and they're emailing you every day, all the time. <laughs> Doing this because they want to share their experiences. I want to share what I'm learning. I want to share my stuff. I'm all excited about. When a student goes quiet, I think it's yeah. the same of like when you have a dog in the house and the dog's quiet, you know there's drama. <laughs> 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 Something is wrong. Something is broken. You've obviously got dogs. I've I've got kids. I know the no, same I, thing. I was just gonna say I wasn't gonna use I wasn't gonna use kids because I don't have kids. I don't have dogs. I have cats. The cats okay. are always quiet and always destroying stuff. So the it's same thing. Really the yeah, but but yeah. So I know that if I haven't heard from X student for three days, something's wrong. And then you know, then I'll reach out to them and go, "What's up? You know, what's happening?" Because when you're you know when you're in that frame of mind, and we spoke briefly before before this chat about you know, the stuff that goes on mentally and your mindset and your emotions that impact your studying. If you're locked inside your own head and you're worried and you're stressing and you're freaking out, it's very difficult to reach out and go, I need to email someone and tell them I'm depressed. I need to email someone because, you know, I, I spoke to a student last year and uh, towards the end of last year and they were like, oh, well, you know, depression is natural. Like all the students, you know, all the CTA students I've spoken to like are on some kind of depression medication or, I'm like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> so I checked into, you know, some clinic or something. And I'm like, no, it should never get that bad. You know, you, we should never, like, but that's also, you know, that, that's a, you're, when you're on your own and you only have mm. yourself. Mm. No, and, and, I, and I think that's why almost, yeah, in our program, fundamental to that is creating a, a constructive community because you, yeah. I agree with you never gets that. I mean, some people, I guess, do have um, clinical depression. And then, of course, that's a separate issue. That's not yeah, caused from stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but if, there's, if there's depression as a result of stress and as a result of no support, um, that's, that's not okay. And we need to create this community where we, where we feel comfortable in, in reaching out and, and yeah. 
encouraging each other. And, it, and it's not just lecturers, because part of the community is also students speaking to students. I think some of the best learning I hear is, is, is um, we have what we call regional, um, uh, regional uh, student groups. And so we'll get all our students together in, for example, Joburg and Pretoria and um, Cape Town and wherever they are in the world. And we'll create these groups and encourage them into study groups, provide support in those groups and, and just encourage them on WhatsApp and whatever it is to, to talk. Because I mean, literally as a lecturer, when some of the best explanations mm -hmm. I've heard in my entire life is a student teaching another student. Yeah. And, yeah. and these are the types of communities, as I say, it's, it's the community of lecturers and students together, but it's also the community of students. Um, we also have mentors in our program, which is past successful students. So we have, for example, students who've been successful in the program in the past coming in and providing mentorship and one-on-one -on -one support to the yeah, students. That's um, as, as lecturers, I think often we um, think we too, we know too much and we, we have all the answers. I think we, we human like anyone else and more of our role than telling people what to do um, is facilitating communities. And as I say, that could be yeah. communities of students, communities of past students. Um, it could be counselors, it could be other skills. Um, that is what's necessary for learning. And it's, it's also why I think, it, I mean, in our program, we spend a lot of time talking about what learning is, what the objective yeah. of it is. Um, yeah. okay. Because it's, it's, we, we never want to be in the position where we say, here's 300 pages on, um, I don't know, group accounting and changes and holdings. Um, you, that's going to be hard. And you're not going to know why you're doing it and what you're doing yeah. it for. Right. Um, before we talk about these things, we need to talk about what is the objective? What are we trying to achieve? If you get stuck, what is yeah. an appropriate mechanism to, to, to reach out? We need to pause and have little moments of like five minute learning chunks. We need to break away into discussions. These yeah. are the things that constitute yeah. learning and help us to develop the skills that we need to be CAs, which is ultimately where, where yeah. we kind of want to go. So you mentioned, you mentioned the, you know, discuss, discuss learning. And I think, um, for, you know, for, for a student who's coming out of third year, for example, a fairly strong third year, um, and they're kind of fairly happy, um, what would you say to that student about their understanding of, or, of what learning is versus what you need them to understand about what learning is? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, Yvonne, you, it's, a, it's such a good question because it's, it's, the question goes to what our role is once we qualify or even what our role is as citizens yeah. in the world. Um, and I think the important thing to know about learning is it's not a static thing as a start. Learning in where we are today means that we have to adapt. We have to be willing to make mistakes. Change. We have to be prepared to fail and yeah. fail. No one likes failing because yeah. failing, failing feels crap. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mince my words about that one. But, <laughs> I but, agree, yeah. But, but failing is so important because when you fail, you know what you don't know. And you can't improve until you know what you don't know. Yeah. Because once you fail, then you can reflect and you can change. And that is the number one yeah. thing about learning is it's about change. And change, unfortunately, is hard and it doesn't feel good. But yep. it's value, and, and that's exactly why it's valuable, ironically, because it, it, it pushes us to be something that we wouldn't necessarily naturally be. It pushes us to be better than yeah. what we were yesterday. When, and if, if someone says they like learning and they are prepared to learn, they have to be prepared to fail yeah. and to learn from their failures. There is no other way to, to do it. Um, there, there certainly are nicer ways to do it than other ways. Like, for example, Failure doesn't always have to be official. And in yeah. that, I mean, when I was a student, I tried to fail when it didn't count. So when I yeah. practiced my questions on my own, yeah. when it wasn't an exam, I would definitely get 20% and 30% in the, when I almost when you were studying, yeah. created my, my, my learning environment. But yeah. then I made sure because I'd failed all the times that it didn't count, I made sure that when it did count, then I had a higher chance of not failing. Yeah. Um, but but it does it, I think I almost feel like everyone's got a bucket of failure that they have to get out the way. And until it's, a, it's a really good way of putting it, yeah. It's good, it's good, it's gonna happen. It's just it's gonna happen. Do so, you start so, the day before so, the exam, on the exam, yeah. or like a few months before the exam, kind of yeah. it's gonna you happen. You better you better take your bucket of failure and chuck it out as quickly chuck as possible. <laughs> 
<laughs> everyone's got to do it, man. Yeah, it is. It, 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 yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think, you know, when, when I have students moving into CTA as well, you know, especially from sort of from a third year to, to a CTA, it's like we kind of think that every year we move on CTA or the next year of studying is just going to be harder. You know, there's more detail and harder. Um, would you say that that applies to the difference between third year and CTA? It's just, it's more detail and it's harder. And it, it goes to our discussion about what learning is and, yeah. and almost, yeah. and, and the, getting the basics right and getting the foundation right. Because if you can really get something, if you really get the basics of it, I, I, I'm a big fan of the conceptual framework in financial reporting. Um, and, and the idea that if you really understand the conceptual framework, everything else is an outpouring of that. Mm. And, and so I, 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 there's something in me that doesn't like the idea that kind of every year it's getting harder. Yeah. Um, I like the idea that every year you're putting in more and more work into the pipeline of your life and you're building up resilience and you're building up foundations and that is systematically making you a better person and allowing you to make better decisions and function better. You, we can't see anything in isolation. I mean, I, I hate the idea that, I don't know, we're going to study something in third year and then we're going to restudy it in fourth year yeah. and that those are independent yeah. things. We lay the foundations now for the future. Yeah. Um, even when I talk to students who um, failed, for example, they say, oh man, well, last year was wasted. And you're like, no, it wasn't wasted. Yeah. If you worked hard, if you failed and you learned things that made you a better person, that is not a waste. Mm. That is inc incredibly valuable. I mean, we've spoken about failure and, and like how you need to get your bucket of failure out the way. Be glad that you failed um, because it means that you've got some failing out the way that you're not going to do in the future. And if we see almost these moments as independent things, then life's going to be hard. But if we, on the other hand, can build to something bigger yeah. than us and ourselves and our learning and our journey, um, then, then, then that's useful. Yeah. Because then we're taking, and, it, but, and it's also, I suppose, why our life has to point in a, in a meaningful direction because we have to be building towards something. It's also not great to build to, towards something that you're not sure what you're building. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but the, these, you have to look at these things in, in context because everything's about context. Right. So someone who has come through first, second year, pretty much cramming their studies, because you can, you can kind of get away with it. Uh, sort of cram your studies, oh, right. you know. If you're getting away with it, you, and, and you're cramming, you're doing it wrong, and you're gonna pay for it in the future. Well, that, but this, this is it, you know, and I think, I've had, a, you know, I've had discussions like a lot of my students, and to some extent, there's a sense of pride, you know, in first and second year, I was able to cram my studies, you know, I didn't have to study the whole year or the whole semester to pass. Um, I went through my stuff, you know, a week, two weeks before the exam, and then I was fine. Um, the challenge, you know, the, the challenge and the problem with that, obviously, is that as you get to higher levels, you're not, you don't have the foundational work, you know, you don't have the foundational work on which to build. And I think probably every CTA lecturer I've ever spoken to talks about the fact that one of the things their students struggle with is like students don't get the basics. And I don't actually think that students understand what we mean when we say that. <laughs> because they're like, but of course I get, you know, of course I know the basics, like I've got a degree, I've done this stuff, whatever the case is. But if you're still in undergrad, if you're still studying this stuff, you need to be so careful that you're not just memorizing it and go, okay, if I see a question that says this and this and this, then I'll do this and this and this. And then if I see a question that does this and this and this, I'll do this and this and this, and I want to file it away. And then, you know, on the day of the exam, it looks like that and that and that. And okay, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. there's your answer. Yeah, I mean, as, as soon as you're doing something, I mean, it comes back to the question of just how could that be useful in the world? If it, right. Because it's, it's just, Very good no, one's, no yeah. one's ever going to ask you to like just memorize something or recall something. They're going to yeah. Google it. I've got and Google for that, yeah. If you are creating thought processes in your life, but you just know fundamentally that cannot be something that could ever be useful. Yeah. Um, uh, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you may need to change your approach. Cause as you say, it is, it does come back to haunt you. And for most students that I know, it comes back to haunt them in CTA where they're like, actually I've never, never really took the time to really get to grips with what this is. And you know, now, now is the time that I have to do it. But, um, you know, obviously now is the time you've got the least amount of time in which, 
<laughs> yeah. So if you're listening to this and you're still doing undergrad, the warning is start thinking. <laughs> and I really like your comment of if you're thinking about what you're studying or if you're studying the stuff, you know, is this useful in the world? Like, how is this useful? And if the only thing that you're really getting from it is I can recite it or I can regurgitate it or I can do, I can do this. Mm. This is the only thing I can do. That's not going to help anybody because and if, you, and if you're getting a qualification that yes that that is forcing you to think like that then that qualification is not going to be worth the paper it's written on absolutely because that's it's it's, it's our qualifications at the end of the day right are, are things that show that we are going to be value-adding citizens yeah. Uh, yeah yeah absolutely and the, i think the interesting thing about the whole value add concept is the concept of what value is changes you know 50 years ago, value was someone who can do ridiculous, you know, ridiculous calculations in their head because technology wasn't necessarily, you know, at the same point. But now I don't, I don't need you to do fancy calculations for me because I've got an Excel spreadsheet. I've got a calculator on my phone that's more powerful than anything in my head right now. So it so needs something different. To, to almost summarize it into like one sentence, the only thing that students need to be functional and to be excellent in the economy is confidence in their ability to learn and to not be afraid of change. If, if, if you can get that right and you can actually apply that and, and, yeah. um, and actually do it because that's hard. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to stand here and say that, that yeah, I necessarily that need that, but, but that's the thing that we constantly need to work towards is, am I confident in my ability to learn? Am yeah. I prepared to, to admit that I'm, I don't know yeah. everything. I can't know everything. I mean, look at, look at Google, look at whatever. Obviously, you don't know everything. Are, yeah. are you able to navigate the world? Are you able to, to figure out what's relevant and what's not? Um, and are you, are you not afraid of change? Because yeah. if you're afraid of change... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you may want to work on that. The world, the world has got nothing but change for it. Okay, so if, if you're looking at a, a student coming into CTA now... Um, what what do you want to say to someone who's going to start studying CTA now? Who's going to start now? Never um, touched CTA before. First first CTA attempt. Well, as I said, I would I would start with I would do self authoring. Um, self authoring dot com. I think it's right. not an accounting thing, and it it no, talks no. about it talks about your life, and it, yeah. it forces you to think about that. So I would say do that because it's going to uh, it's going to make you think about things you haven't thought about and and maybe you have thought about them but it'll also sharpen your thought in terms of helping you point in a in a direction that will be meaningful in your life um and and yeah once we kind of got that and we kind of got all the, the life stuff out the way um I would, I would, I would, I would say a few basics. I mean, in in CTA, we can't get away from the fact that no one's going to learn for you. Um, generally, CTA programs take forty hours a week. Yeah. Um, if, if you can't commit forty hours a week, um, you just you're not setting yourself up for success. So, I mean, you can people do it every year while they're working, um, but they're yeah. finding yeah. times kind of in the morning before work, in the evenings, right. in the yeah. evening, uh, in yeah. on the weekends on public holidays, all the times that no one else wants to, wants to learn, you can do it, but it's going to be hard. So I would say it's, it's, it's going to be hard. And that's why you better make sure this is important in your life, because that's what's going to keep you going through the hard times is if, yeah. if this is meaningful. It's too hard to do if it's not meaningful. So you better make sure it's meaningful. Um, and, and then after making sure you've cleared the time in your life, and that in, involves talking to friends, family, parents, um, telling them, listen, don't phone me up on a Friday night. I'm going to be studying. Um, talking to your employer and saying, listen, I need this time. If, you, if you're not going to give me the study leave and the, the appropriate time day to day consistently, I'm not set up for success. And everyone needs to be on board with this thing. So you need yeah. to get everyone on board with this. Once you've got everyone on board and you're like, right, I've, I've cleared the time in my life and it's, it's meaningful and it's important to me, then I would, I would bug the hell out of your lecturers in terms of talking to them about their experience. Right. Um, and, and what are what are effective approaches and how you can make your mistakes while they don't count and, and what have they learned what can I avoid you're still mm -hmm. going to have to make your mistakes but there's as I said there's better mistakes that you can make than others um, one thing we do a lot in our program that before we get into any 
technical material, we've got probably about 20 hours of, uh, of, of learning and videos that, that speaks about clearing time in your life, uh, appropriate study techniques, teaching and learning models, what, what past successful students have done, um, all the ingredients that, that build to setting you up for a firm foundation for success. We'll talk about the technical stuff kind of a week in, two weeks yeah. in. Once yeah. all that other stuff is out there, if you can't get that that other stuff out the way, yeah, it's always bother. going to affect you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I'll emphasize the fact: bug the hell out of your lectures because it, it, it should apply <laughs> at, at, at any institution. And I don't yes. want. I, I hope what I'm saying is useful to. I'm not just sitting here and kind of punting the program that I run. I think it it goes for any students. I hope this is, this is useful for students um, wherever that bug the hell out of your lecturers. They're there to do a job. Yeah. You shouldn't feel, of course, you want to be respectful and, 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 and professional, all that stuff. But that's the hell what they're there for. Yeah, that's what they're there for. Um, and, yeah. and make the most of it and demand it. Um, yeah. Obviously, be prepared and um, go in with good questions and thoughtful questions and be prepared to change and all that. But, but use them and dive yeah. in, man. This is, yeah. this is your Absolutely. career. This is your life. And, and, and you yeah. better make a success out of it because no one else is going to. Yeah. So a student that says, I don't want to go and speak to Gareth about my FNAC because I just, I don't know anything. And I just, I don't want to speak to him because I don't want him to know that I really don't know my stuff. Mm. What do you say to him? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd hope that on our program, we've created a lot of different mechanisms that, that because I get that sometimes... I don't know. Sometimes people are intimidating. Um, yeah. maybe I would be intimidating to some students um, for reasons I don't know. As a well, I think as as, as your lecturer, as a student, it's natural yeah. to feel like my lecturer thinks that I know this. You know, I sat yeah. through the class yesterday, so my lecturer thinks that I know this. You know, yeah. I think so, from your I, perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, as I said, I totally get that. So what I'd hope. I would hope that we've created in our program is alternative mechanisms. We, we almost talk about a buffet of support. So okay. we have um, public discussion forums, we have private discussion forums, we have email, we have one-on-one -on -one videos, we have daily group discussions live online. Um, we've got student representatives, we've got student regional groups, we've got mentors of students who've done the program in the past. There's a, there's really is literally a buffet of support available. Um, because I understand different people gel with different yeah. people. So right. a student might not like me. Um, and that's, I don't know, I, I can do my best to be as likable as possible, but inherently people, for example, they might prefer you they versus me and, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. And, and so I must create mechanisms for students, for example, to feel comfortable reaching out to someone else or through someone else yeah. um, to do that. Yeah. Of course, a sub part of the, the discussion is why do you not feel comfortable? Yeah. And is there potentially a misunderstanding in terms of our roles um, and how, how we can develop our thinking better um, in terms of whether you reach out? Um, and I would hope, I guess, with when that student, for example, reached out to another lecturer or another student, then they could have that discussion um, about, mm -hmm. about that. But I mean, we, uh, the difficult thing is, I mean, we come from different cultures and different backgrounds. Um, and for example, in a Zulu culture, as I understand, it would be sometimes disrespectful to talk to someone in a person of authority or challenge them. And for example, reaching out may be seen as challenging. Um, and, and those are difficult things because I can't just say, oh, well, don't be scared oh, yeah. or, don't, or, or just ignore a cultural norm yeah. um, or, or something like that. But it's, it's incumbent on us to, to try and create those mechanisms where um, people will feel comfortable because the starting point for good learning is being comfortable and having a safe space and being vulnerable. Um, yeah. So, so if all the effort needs to go into, into creating those spaces. Yeah. So as far as um, your, as far as CA Connect's concerned, like what is your, what's your vision for, for CA Connect? You know, the student that's, that's lo looking at you. I mean, okay. So just to repeat that, cause I know I do get that question a lot. CA Connect, you're part of Mill Park, right? Yeah. You are psych accredited. So if they look on psych as accredited lists, they'll find you underneath Mill Park, right? And there's a the little as, link as Mill Park, yeah. as, as Mill Park right? So yeah. that is, it is Mill Park. I think your name's there. You're the... 
the you're the, the, food. Honest, the, the, the <laughs> yeah i'm the i'm the head you're of department yeah um, and the only reason i mean sia connects merged with millpark so the only reason we've kept kind of sia connect on the website is because people know sia connect that's right okay so we just want to say like we won in the same but but All in right. terms of the qualification uh, okay um, Students get a Millpark qualification. Millpark's the accredited institution. Um, but in terms of the lecturers, all the lecturers on the program are all the lecturers who were part of yeah. CA Connect. Um, okay. but, but it's it's a literal full-on like, merger. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I wasn't aware of that. All right. So what's your what's your dream for what's your dream? What would you love to see happen with this? Mm. The dream hasn't what, what I'm proud about uh, CA Connect and now Millpark, what I'm what I'm really proud about is the dream hasn't changed since 2010. Yeah. Okay. The, the dream has being that, that initial need of, in the CA industry, students aren't being assisted or, or weren't being assisted um, and they weren't being empowered in terms of good CA education. And, and the, the, the dream, I think, with CA Connect and Millpark is to change the, the landscape of CA education um, it, and say it's accessible to everyone. It, we can yeah. create great education. Um, in the process, we're going to create more CAs, better CAs, um, it, it really is to, to everyone's benefit. There's, there's no excuse for, for sub-quality education. Um, and I think it should change the landscape of CA education. I've got, yeah, it, and it's, as I say, it hasn't changed since, since 2010, but yeah. for, for, the, for the first time since our launch at the end of, uh, middle of 2019, I feel like it's actually coming to, to fruition. We're now we have an exciting mechanism um, with, with yeah. the online program to yeah. actually really do that. And I think that the, the program is going to um, take off hopefully exponentially in terms of really what it, what it can do. And there's, there's fascinating things like we're employing um, uh, psychologists, um, data scientists at the moment, as I say, to understand student behavior, to work on proactive support yeah. and reaching out to students and how we can create just excellent communities where we're all working together towards this, this common goal within a partnership. Um, and checking out these, these, these ancient ideas of authoritative education and this idea of technical experts, and I know and you don't know, that yeah. is not education, that yeah. is not the world we live in. Uh, and we need to change, change those ideas and we need to have conversations about, about what we are trying to create, what is learning, what is useful, um, and, yeah. and then only do we have a platform to actually create um, great CS. Awesome. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think the um, it's always interesting to know, you know, where wherever someone starts something from, and especially since this was your sort of dream for a while. Like, I think I don't know if people really understand just how much work goes into getting a CTA accreditation. You know, I think there's so many students out there that are going, please, can we have more options, which I totally understand. And that's great and everything, but I hope they recognize, or I don't think they realize <laughs> just how much effort you guys had to put in, in order to get the accreditation to begin with. Cause it's a, yeah, no, it's a, it's, it's a, a massive process. And, and a massive I, won't, I won't bore you with the details of what went into it, but, but what I would, what I will say is that I, I think it's, it's, resulted hopefully in just a really useful program and a, a yeah. great yeah. program where I think that any program's got room to improve and we, we continually having um, focus groups and we're doing analysis and we, we're trying to learn about what can make our program better. But it's at a point where we've got a, a great system where I think yeah. great learning can occur. Um, yeah. And, yes. and that, that's exciting. That's, I think, that, that's, I think it that's is. That's what I can be passionate about. Yeah, 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 I think I think it's I think it's extremely exciting, and I think um, so. You know, from from the students' perspective, and I I totally agree with you. This is a this is a two way street. Learning is a two way street. It's about what you impart, but it's also about what you take on and what you absorb and how you deal with it. And I think, especially at CTA, the way that you need to deal with and 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 you know manipulate information is very very different to what you may have been doing in second year you know the fact that you've got to create opinions and give advice and debate stuff and discuss stuff that's not the same as define list identify you know these, these are really really different things so i'm really excited you know i really like i love the online um platform i think you know I, I totally agree with you, you know, the technology and the stuff that you can do in terms of understanding, you know, the reporting of the student engagement is, is 
is fantastic. I think that's great. Um, and it is, you know, I think it's, it's a two way street. And I, I believe, you know, that, that a lot of the value that lecturers add for their students comes from their passion and their sense of fulfillment. If it's something that you're extremely passionate about, you know, I kind of want to change the world. I want to change the way this is done. You know, I'm, I want to provide a channel for students to, you know, that, that they don't have anywhere else or that, you know, that I, I firmly believe this is something that's going to add value to them. For me, mm. that's always a... And, yeah, yeah, and, I, and I think it's important to, to say that, I mean, learning should be fun. And, and that's why it's so important for lecturers to pique the interest of the students. Like, yeah. I, again, like when you mentioned earlier about kind of students being depressed and all that, like that's just the opposite of what learning should be. Learning should yeah. be about discovery. It should interest yeah. you. It should be amazing. It should like blow your mind. Like I said, when I, I, I hadn't done accounting at school and then I did it in first year, I was like, this system is incredible. People <laughs> have thought so long and hard about like what a debit and the credit is. Like this is, this is amazing. And like a consolidation. I was like, whoa. Like someone thought really hard about putting two sets of financial statements together yeah. and deferred tax. Like what a phenomenal system. Like that was like, there was a lot of thinking that went into deferred tax. And, yeah. and if in your learning, if you're not thinking, if you're not constantly like, wow, that's incredible. Um, that like just blows me away. Again, it's, it's, it's talking yeah. to deep questions because yeah. I mean, we're learning stuff that people have put, put a lot of thought into and, and logic into, but that you yeah. shouldn't have to learn them off by heart. It's like some, no. some, some guy in London at the ISB put a lot of thought in, into this thing and he had a very clear intention. So you better try and understand the intention the because intention that's, what's gonna, that's what's going to help yeah. you get part of what, okay. what you're doing. Okay, so on that note, again, I want to thank you for your time. Um, sure. uh, I'm going to add contact details and links to, to your site and everything um, on the blog post as well so people know where to find you. Um, if people are looking for kind of study career advice, like should I come, should I study here, should I, they can email, they can yeah, email sure. you, there's, I assume. There's a, there's a contact page on, on yeah. our website, so that's far the easiest. Okay. But, so they, uh, they, they can get hold of you. Yeah, and we get back to people in a day. You, you, you shouldn't, right. it shouldn't take a day, longer than a day for us to get okay. hold of you. So, right. so we're there and we're waiting. So whatever their questions, whatever it is, Go and you, your enrollments end, your enrollments have finished, haven't they? Or no, have we, we open for another nine, 10 days till the 31st okay. of January. So okay. we, we January. open till yeah, 31 January. So, so yeah, the, the course starts in February. So people need to get applications in soon if they want to. But then, as we say, we, we've got a mid-year intake um, if, if people are slightly late. So there's, there's July too. And I think those open in around April. Okay. Awesome. Well, again, thank you very, very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, here's to a really good year for you and your CTA students. Thanks, Yvonne. And, and also to, to the guys watching this, I know it's, um, it, yeah, hopefully it's been useful for even the guys who won't come to our pro program. I think, yes. I, yeah. I, I hope it's been, an, it's been an interesting discussion for me. So thank you to you for, for facilitating it. And I, I hope for the guys watching, it's been, been useful. Um, and yeah, all the best for, for, your studies and and wherever the the guys watching where where that um takes you and certainly wish you guys all the best awesome cool we shall chat further <laughs>